and only 11 actually met criteria, met the European standards for broad spectrum. Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be answering the question, are European sunscreens better than those in the United States? Most people believe that European sunscreens are better than those in the US, but in today's video, I'm gonna get into what it is about European sunscreens that make them stand out over those available in the US. Sunscreen is arguably the most important aspect of your skincare routine. Super important for protecting you against those damaging UV rays that not only burn your skin, but also set the stage for skin cancers, not to mention wrinkles, fine lines, sunspots, if you are trying to treat any skin condition or skin issue, sun protection is your best friend, whether that be melasma, rosacea, acne, hyperpigmentation. Speaking of acne, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Peach Slices. If you are looking to change up your acne skincare routine, definitely check out Peach Slices, their three-step acne routine all features salicylic acid, a prescription grade acne fighting ingredient, but their formulations are really what set these products apart. Ingredients that help improve skin hydration and reduce inflammation and irritation. So they go to work strong on acne, but gentle on the skin barrier. These products are free of fragrance and they don't have any drying alcohols. They're formulated with some of my favorite ingredients, things like centella, as well as hyaluronic acid to help impart deep moisture while also treating the acne with salicylic acid. These products are formulated to not strip away at the moisture barrier to help you tolerate the salicylic acid better and allow it to go to work to help control the acne and prevent breakouts in the future. The Acne Clarifying Cleanser is free of sulfates and has 2% salicylic acid. It's very gentle, it's hydrating, and doesn't strip away at the moisture barrier. If you're accustomed to using a leave-on salicylic acid product, I highly suggest their Acne Exfoliating Toner. It has 2% salicylic acid in it, but is free of any drying alcohols and also free of fragrance. It has those same hydrating ingredients to help support the moisture barrier. So it really goes to work to fight acne and reduce inflammation that ultimately could otherwise lead to hyperpigmentation. And then lastly, their acne oil-free moisturizer has 0.5% salicylic acid. And it is a nice lightweight hydrating moisturizer. It's oil-free, so it doesn't feel greasy on the skin. Having a deeply hydrating formula such as this is really important for addressing the needs of acne prone skin because it tackles the dryness and irritation and the impaired moisture barrier while simultaneously that salicylic acid delivers good acne control within the pore. Peach Slices is available for purchase at CVS, Ulta, Amazon, and peachandlily.com. A lot of the difference between European sunscreens and those in the US boils down to how different governments regulate sunscreen. In the US, sunscreen is regulated as an over-the-counter medication, whereas in Europe, sunscreen is regulated as a cosmetic. Because in the US, sunscreen is regulated as an over-the-counter medication, it has a lot stricter oversight, and there are a lot more kind of draconian hoops that manufacturers have to go through when it comes to formulating sunscreens and sunscreen ingredients. Sunscreens protect us against two types of radiation from the sun, UVB and UVA. UVB rays are those that burn our skin, and UVB rays also penetrate deep into the skin and into the skin cells to directly damage DNA, and that ultimately is what sets the stage for skin cancer formation down the road. UVA rays, however, they actually penetrate very, very deeply into the skin to destroy collagen, suppress the immune system in the skin, and they also directly damage DNA as well. So both UVB and UVA rays are what are responsible for laying the groundwork for damage to the skin that ultimately can lead to skin cancer. Both of these rays also aggravate things like acne, melasma, rosacea, hyperpigmentation. When you pick up a sunscreen, whether it be in the US or Europe, probably the thing that stands out to you the most is something called SPF, the sun protection factor. And this reflects how well the sunscreen will protect you against the UVB rays, the burning rays. It doesn't tell you anything, however, really about how well the sunscreen protects you against those UVA rays that penetrate deeply. So it's only giving you a small piece of information about the overall protective ability of the sunscreen. Since we have learned a lot more about the role of UVA in not only damaging the skin, but in skin cancer formation, in 2011, the FDA issued regulation and statements around 
uh, the terminology broad spectrum such that a sunscreen uh, labeled broad spectrum could tell the consumer that the sunscreen would protect them not only against UVB, but also against UVA. But in Europe, even though sunscreens are not regulated as medications, they still have to protect against UVA in order to be considered broad spectrum. One major difference between sunscreens in the US and those in Europe comes down to this broad spectrum labeling and how it is determined. In the US, broad spectrum, while it indicates that the sunscreen protects against both UVB and UVA, it's a pass-fail assessment, whereas in Europe, they dig a little deeper. SPF, the measure of UVB protection, that is actually done on human skin. But for getting to the designation of broad spectrum, another test is employed, and that is called critical wavelength testing. This is an in vitro test, meaning in a lab, it's not done on human skin, so it's a lab-based test. And what it is, is a calculation that measures the point below which 90% of absorbance is present. In order to be considered broad spectrum in the United States, a sunscreen's critical wavelength 90% uh, absorbance has to occur at 370 nanometers. That will basically get you a pass and you can consider yourself broad spectrum. In Europe, however, it's not a pass-fail system. In order to be considered broad spectrum, the lab measurement of UVA has to be at least one-third the lab measurement of UVB. The pass-fail system that we use here in the United States is flawed because not all broad spectrum sunscreens are going to absorb the same amount of UVB and UVA. The critical wavelength really only um, gives you a idea of the breadth of wavelengths that a sunscreen protects from. It doesn't tell you anything about the magnitude or the height of protection at each wavelength or how well the sunscreen protects at each wavelength. Take for example, SPF 30 sunscreen a and SPF 30 sunscreen B. Both sunscreens can meet that threshold, that benchmark of a critical wavelength of 370 nanometers, but can vary tremendously in the amplitude, the magnitude of UVA protection that they afford, as you can see here graphically. Saying that you're broad spectrum, the pass-fail system, it doesn't tell you that you're actually very good at protecting against UVA. In Europe, they actually qualify it, and the lab measurement of UVA has to be at least a third of the lab measurement of UVB. Otherwise, it cannot be considered broad spectrum. We don't have that here, and so we can have sunscreens here in which there is simply inadequate UVA protection, but 90% of the formulation will absorb at that 370 nanometer benchmark, but it doesn't mean that you're getting good quality protection at those wavelengths. The pass-fail method that is used here in the US, the standards are simply too low, which is ironic because sunscreens are regulated as drugs here, whereas in Europe they're regulated as cosmetics. So you would think that the, because, you know, in theory, the standards are a lot stricter and the regulations are a lot more stringent, that they would have better ways of saying yes or no, this, you know, this can meet broad spectrum criteria. But in reality, Europe is much stricter at what can be deemed broad spectrum. So right off the bat, you have better, as a consumer in Europe buying sunscreens, you can have good confidence is the sunscreens that you're purchasing that they're gonna offer quality UVA protection. Here in the States, pass-fail is simply not good enough. In 2017, there was a study done here in the States where they took 20 sunscreens off the shelves and they did the European testing on these sunscreens and only 11 actually met criteria, met the European standards for broad spectrum. Then we have the issue of ingredients. <laughs> Oh, this is such a sore spot for me. So uh, the active ingredients in sunscreens, filters, uh, the US, because of the rigorous process the FDA imposes, manufacturers' brands, they have to go through hoops. I mean, a lot of testing to prove that their ingredients are super safe. And it just seems to be like a really draconian process in that it completely limits the inclusion of these newer filters, which have been used in Europe as well as Japan, Australia, Canada, everywhere else throughout the world pretty much. 
aside from the US. So we are really, really, really behind when it comes to the active ingredients in sunscreens. The manufacturers here in the States, their hands are tied. They, they have a limited amount, number of active ingredients to choose from. That's why our sunscreens, they don't feel as nice, I would say. In my opinion, I've used a lot of European sunscreens and a lot of American sunscreens, and I can tell you from experience personally that the European sunscreens feel a lot better. Those sunscreens in Europe, they have more ingredients, they have more sophisticated ingredients, and they have stricter criteria when it comes to broad spectrum labeling that I really think ends up serving consumers in, in Europe better than you know, the US market. I think we're really limited. All that being said, if you live here in the US, I do still recommend buying sunscreen, wearing it, and wearing it daily. It is a tried and true way to protect your skin from the damaging effects of UV. It is not a shield of armor, however. You still need to do things like wear sun protective clothing, not stay out in the sun too long. I mean, it's kind of like driving a car, right? Everyone should be wearing their seatbelt when you drive a car. But that's not enough, right? Like you also need a car whose tires are inflated and you know there's not a flat tire. You also should never drive under the influence of alcohol. I mean, there are a lot of things that go into driving a car safely. Same thing with protecting your skin from the sun. Sunscreen alone is never enough. And when, if you ever feel frustrated by sunscreen, do you know that early studies using a, as low as SPF 15 with not so great filters do still show a benefit in reducing skin cancer from consistent use of sunscreen. So if you're wearing sunscreen, you know, try to not get hung up on these details or you know, get envy of your friends from Europe who have better filters. Um, it's not as though your efforts are a waste by wearing American sunscreens like you definitely should wear them and many of them are in fact very very good we just don't have a good way to compare what's on our market what, what is on our shelves when you go into walmart you know you can't this is a common misconception that i see in comments and in social media posts elsewhere is like people trying to deduce the efficacy of a sunscreen by its ingredients and you simply cannot do that you can't look at oh well this sunscreen has x percent of this ingredient and x percent of this ingredient so it must be good versus this one you can't do that because it comes down to the formulation overall and you can't really reproduce protection based on the formulation uh, and the percentage of active ingredients. Inactive ingredients also play a role in the final protection as well. It's unfortunate because there are skin diseases in dermatology which are exquisitely sensitive to UVA rays. And as a reminder, UVA rays come in through window glass. And we lack, not only do we lack the labeling to help those patients choose sunscreens that offer really good protection against those rays that trigger their disease but we also lack the spectrum of you know the, the breadth the number of filters that protect against those uva rays really the best filter that we have the only truly extensive uva filter that we have here is avabenzone and it in and of itself has issues with stability and things like that. Yes, it can be stabilized, but um, it would be nice, obviously, if we had more filters because the more UVA filters, the more stable, that, that helps avabenzone be more stable. It helps make for a better sunscreen overall. So I hope that was helpful, you guys, in terms of clarifying the differences between sunscreens in Europe versus sunscreens in the US. If you live in the US, do not feel as though you are wasting your time by wearing our sunscreens. They still help um, and they're still a very, very important part of your daily routine. But if you get a chance to try European sunscreen, I highly recommend them. They are, in my you know personal experience, a lot more uh, cosmetically elegant probably because they have so many more filters. They have more wiggle room in terms of creating a product than we do here. Uh, comment below uh, what you think is better, European or American sunscreens. Uh, anyways, next time you're in CVS, take a look at the sunscreens and don't forget to check out Peach Slices if you are in the market for some salicylic acid in your acne routine. They've got some great products. And thank you for sponsoring today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.